Welcome everybody, we're Fellowship. We're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer and then we're going to have manifestations and then we'll jump right into the teaching. So I'm going to open with a word of prayer. Yahweh, yeah, we thank you for the every opportunity that you place before us. We thank you that we're able to serve you. Uh, we thank you, Christ, for being our head, uh, that you paid for such a uh, such a, a big price for us, that, that you died for us, that we may be able to live for you. We thank you for that, for the authority. We thank you for this teaching this evening. We thank you for the safe trip of Aaron coming back in. We thank you for his uh, uh, his great stories of, of the things that took place. And we just thank you for all that you've given to us that we never uh, become come before you ungrateful or unsatisfied, but we come before you laying out our supplications and, uh, and, and come to you in faith. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for the words that... Uh, that you utter to us that we are able to hear these things and and for the that ruah that we are able to uh, tap into and, and speak the, the the wonderful things the the mysteries that you give to us that we're able to uplift one another so we thank you for this and for uh, this teaching and everything you give in the name of your son jesus christ so for anybody who'd like to manifest go ahead please <laughs> My child, if your heart is your house, and if you hear something knocking, it is me. Let me in, my child. Let me in your heart. If you see the adversary, don't let him in. Lock the door. Close the curtains. Don't let him in. Mm -hmm. My child, if you see me, open the curtains. Open the doors. Just let me in. Amen. Amen. Bushana Senushino, Clamasino, Casa Moshina, so nigh. Bosanashina, Quasanoyo, Rani Sheno, Casamalania, or He shall masol, a kisho, my old na, Yura, Usa Mishini, Hosini, Basanisha Koyama, Rabu, Masinishko, Sana, you, Ramasino, Kashanakoi, Sanakoi, Mashanakosa. My children. Do not be distracted, but look ahead towards me. Look ahead. Do not be distracted by the small things or the evil things in this world that you think will be good. Just look at me and avoid everything else. Avoid eye contact. Avoid everything with anything else. Just come straight towards me. And um, don't be... Don't go to evil. Amen. My children, I am a vegetable. And Satan is a donut. My children, what one will you choose? If you choose the best vegetable, then you rest. If you choose the donut, then that is evil. My children, choose the vegetable. Amen. You know what's right and wrong. You can feel it. And you know what you're doing is just like a child who's taking an Oreo from the packet before dinner. I and thinks I can't see. Because I am watching, and I am watching, and I am waiting for you to make the right decision and realize what you are doing is wrong. And I want, you don't want to believe what you're doing is wrong, but you know that I am telling you that it is, and you need to change that. My sons and daughters, do not cling to the things of this world and, and carry these things and these burdens which are uh, of no value, of no worth, but, but cling to the things that are the truth and the things that that do have worth and that will stand the test of the of the fire, knowing that I will greatly reward those that, that follow me and 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 give great judgment uh, to 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 those who have actually had to uh, to go through the battles and and stood righteous before me. So uh, come to me, call to me, and ask of me that I may be able to go through and I may be able to purge those things that are within your life, things that you may not even realize that you are hanging on to and clinging to, that we may be able to purge these things and, and refine you even finer. My children, know that um, I need you to walk with me and talk with me each day. I desire you as you desire me. I long for you as you long for me. Know that there are certain um, purposes, certain um, things I've created you for, and until we have that relationship, those uh, purposes cannot be done. So there are, there are certain strengths that I've created in you that I need you for. I need you for my kingdom. 
Yahweh, we thank you for these words and for everything that you uh, continually pour out before us. We just thank you for this and for this teaching in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Ah! Okay, kids, I've got some good trivia for you guys today. You ready? All right, here we go. Maybe. Hold that thought. Here we go. Okay, books of the Bible. So, two points if you can get it before the answers come up. Okay, one point if you can get it once you see the answers. Ready? Here we go. First one. What book is after Job? Psalms. Okay. That was good. Two points. She's got the lead. Ready? If you get it before I do it, no look, no looking in the Bible, no cheating. <laughs> Here we go, ready? Next one, next one. What's the book after Daniel? Ezekiel. Oh! <laughs> All right. Ezekiel was right before Daniel. Yeah, that's good. You're close. Okay, what is the book after Second Chronicles? Third Chronicles. <laughs> good job. Give her a good <laughs> Take one of those points away. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Thessalonians. No. no. Uh. <laughs> okay, ready? Here we go. So now it's worth one point. Nehemiah. 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 Ezra. 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 Okay, no points for that one. Here we go. Remember the song, kids? Remember that song? Habakkuk. What's the book after Habakkuk? Habakkuk. 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 Come on. Come on. Here we go. Ready? Zachariah. Okay, you're still in the lead with two points. I Nobody else. Nine, Only two I more questions Nehemiah. left. Here we go. Are you guys ready? Book after Second Timothy. Don't say Third Timothy. Okay, here we go. What's after? What's the book after Second Timothy? Uh, come on, you hear me? I'm okay, here we go. Three years. No. Titus. 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 Yay! I always remember that because people Titus. say that. They'd be going through the Bible and they'd be like, it's Timothy Titus. And I'm like, would you call me? <laughs> Not either. <laughs> okay, we go. Next one. Last one. Book after James. Revelation. First Peter. First Peter. Peter. Yeah. Tie game. Two to two. There's no tiebreaker. Sorry, no, I have one. I And you have one. That's I right. There one. you go. I said, and I got one. Okay. Good job. Okay. I, I like the trivia because it kind of gets you thinking. And I was, it was some of these for me. I was like going. Well, I know like a couple in that area, but I'm like going. I'm not positive. Yeah, I only get to like a few in the song. Okay. So here we go. My thing's kind of locking up here. So what was really neat is your your prophecy was very very combined with what I have in this teaching. Me? Yours. That's absolutely right. So very good. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little study here tonight. And it's going to be on who do we believe and who feeds us and who builds us, who takes us down. What are we focusing in on to improve our faith and to gain the fruits of the faith? What's what's what do you get from faith? Anyone? What do you get? What does faith bring? Prosperity. Prosperity. Health. Health. Healings. Long life. Absolutely. Starters. I mean, what's what's impossible with faith? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. So what does faith bring? It brings all the good things. So here's a. this is a little short teaching here about bringing the faith to attain those blessings, to get those blessings. So who do we believe? The world? Friends, your thoughts, adversary, Yahweh, because basically, what is that song that says the uh, the Johnny Cash that you, you, some you're going to serve somebody? Yeah. Okay, you're going to serve somebody, whether you think you do or not. Yeah. You're serving somebody, and so let's start off here in Isaiah 53. All right, Isaiah 53 is going to be on about 698 ish. Okay, page 698, 1 through 5. Is there? Yeah. Okay, who wants to read this? 1 through 5. Ooh, I will. Go ahead, sweetheart. Okay. Who believed what ye have heard in the arm of Yahweh, 
to whom was it revealed? When he came up as a sapling before him, and as the roots sprout out of dry ground, he had neither beauty nor majesty. When we beheld him, there is nothing to behold that we should desire him. Despised was he, and forsaken of men. Man of pains and familiar with sickness, ye like one of them who the face of hidden. Despised, and we esteem him not. Yet surely our sickness he carried, and <clears throat> as for our pains, he bare the burden of them. But we account him stricken, 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 men of God and humbled. Yet he was pierced for transgressions that were ours, were, was crushed for iniquities that was ours. The chastisement for our well-being was upon him, and by his stripes there is healing for us. Okay, this is hundreds of years before Christ even comes on the scene. Okay, and so think of this. Christ reads this when he's growing up. He's reading the, the scroll of Isaiah. And he sees this and he can read what's going to happen to him. How would you like it if you read a book that told everything that was going to happen in your life? The good, the bad, everything. You'd be like going, kind of want to skip to the back and <coughs> kind of jump ahead to see what's going to happen. But this is what Yahushua did. And so when we see this, here it's telling us, Long before Christ is even born. This is about Christ. And what does it say? You know, a sprout, we beheld him. There was nothing to behold that we should desire him. In other words, this guy's not a, he's not some guy that you'd see like, wow, look at that guy. He's just an ordinary guy. Just a normal looking guy. Nothing unusual about him except for the fact that he's the son of Yahweh. But it's telling us hundreds of years before Christ even comes on the scene that by his stripes there is healing for us. And so this is a promise that we see long before Christ even pays that price. So, going beyond believing, get down. Hey, Donnie might have to hold her, honey. Pepe. Come on. Come on. Okay. And so this is, why don't you grab her, honey? She's just going to keep jumping around. Pepe. Okay. Pepe. Going beyond the believing. And so I, what I think I, is happening too much within Christian realms and even, even, you know, for myself, as you become lazy into things, you explain things away, why this didn't happen, why that didn't happen. And this is the go beyond the believing part. Believing to where, okay, I believe something, but when do I actually receive it? And so this is like the next step. When I, I think I told the story before, but when we would aerial refuel, our airplane would get up close. Now, we're at about 25,000 feet up in the air. And we'd get close to the airplane with the boom out. The, the boom's ready to, that we'd get up underneath it, and it would connect our airplane. And when you get really close to that airplane, there's a pocket of air that's coming off that airplane that you're pushing against. You get right up to it, you're pushing against it, and it would like, they called it a bow wave. Okay. It was a bow wave, and you couldn't, you, to get through that, you had to give it more effort to get in front of it. And as soon as you did, all of a sudden, you'd have to pull the throttle back because now you're coasting in behind it. I guess the kind of same way when you get behind a truck, okay, when you're getting up close to a truck, but you'd really feel it. And so, so many times, one of the hardest things for new pilots was to push through that. They would stay in that zone where that resistance was there the whole time until they actually pushed through, and as soon as they got through it, it was a whole different thing. The flying now became easier, but it was tough. And the whole time, you're thinking, if I overdo it, that airplane's only like 40 feet away. That's it. And so if I overdo it, I might run into the airplane, but to get the gas, to get up there, you had to push through that. And this is what I'm referring to, is we're pushing past that to the next zone. To the next thing. <laughs> Believing is one thing. Receiving is a whole different thing. So if you visualize that you're healed, uh, I'm going to use some stuff that I that I attained from Andrew Womack from one of his teachings that I thought was really good in this because Andrew Womack is excellent when it comes to the healings. I mean, the guy's had a few people he's raised from the dead. Okay, and he is alive in our time. And so, hey, this guy's got some talent. He's got some skill. What's happening? What's different? And how is he tapping into this? Because is that available to us? Yeah. Is the same spirit in us that raised Christ from the dead? Yeah. Absolutely. And so he visualized it, and he talked about that. He said he visualized raising somebody from the dead before it ever happened. And so I think for us, we have to visualize as well a healing. Anybody need a healing? Anybody? 
Okay, I know almost everybody at some point is going to need some form of healing and to visualize it. So we, I believe I'm going to be healed. I believe I'm going to be healed. I keep praying that I'm going to be healed, and you stay back behind and never push through that sweet zone. Yeah. Okay, and that's what I, that's what we're referring to. Visualize that you're to be healed. Faith, which causes us to act or speak what Yahweh speaks, or Water down word of Yahweh to the level of human experience. And this is what's happening. And so I hear this. I hear this even from family members on my mom's side, where the people will say, well, God doesn't heal everyone. Okay? And I'm like going, what do you, you sign up for a lottery? Here, you know, you, you have to win the lottery to get this. And so this is where we look at it to where like going, okay, why are people coming up with this? So you don't get a healing. Whose fault is it? Yours. It's exactly your fault. And so this is, like I said, this is encouragement to push through to that next level. It is not. The word of Yahweh says it's there. In Isaiah, it says that hundreds of years before Christ was even born, that this was going to be. And then Christ comes along and it said it again. Acknowledge, believe, faith, receive. And so the first portion of this, when we're talking about this, and is to visualize it. Okay, let's say, let's say that my back's thrown out. Okay, and I'm in pain. Any movement that I make is hurting. And I have to acknowledge, okay, I need, I need some help here. Something's going wrong. I don't know what's going on. And so I turn that to believing. I believe. I absolutely, the word, what's the word say? The word says I can have this. Absolutely says I can have this. So I believe it. Now I energize the faith in there. Start putting some faith in there. And I control what my mouth says. Okay? I speak what the Word says and not a watered-down version of what the Word says, and I receive. The receive, all this is basically just chaff without the receive. It is. It's all just chaff without the receive. Now, it's all required that you get to this point, but this is to receive is to push through to actually attain that. So, Muslims believe in Yehoshua. Does that do anything? No. Okay? They believe in him. They absolutely do. They don't believe he's the son of God. Okay, The adversary acknowledged Yahushua. He knew exactly who he was. And the unclean spirits, they knew who Yahushua was. And they actually obeyed. Say, and the same thing, that what was it that the apostle said? That he has power over these unclean spirits. Because Christ would cast them out. Mm -hmm. And they're like going, how? We have that. And so we have that power. Does anybody doubt that we don't have that? The unclean spirits knew who it was. But yet, there's no believing in there. They're not going to receive salvation. They're not going to do any miraculous works. We have to separate ourselves from just being, yeah, we know what it is, but we don't tap into that. My, <laughs> my screen's going to. Yeah, it's, it's running kind of goofy, so. <coughs> All right, let me come back to this here real quick. Sorry, guys. So this is where we are. It doesn't. It never messes up when I'm running through and doing all this. Okay. So the first thing is is I think one of the biggest things is is when when you are sick. Okay. And this is a huge dilemma with me. I become sick, and I am speaking against it, and I get defeated, and I'm like going, "Golly!" And what's the adversary? What's the what's the the father of lies tell us? You couldn't even heal yourself from this. Well, how do you think you're going to heal yourself from that? Okay, and that's what we're like going, should I just stop? Should I quit trying? Yeah. Should, I, should I just let it go? And I'm like going, and every single person has been there where they're like going, what the hell is going on? How come, why am I having problems with this? And so the father of lies and confusion, we have to realize what the adversary is. Is it coming unplugged there? Yes. Yeah. Just real touchy. Yeah, it is. Uh, kind of push it towards your mom. Just leave it. It's, it's good. Just don't walk. A third of the host. <laughs> a third of the hosts, okay, followed the adversary. Okay? And so we have to realize that by virtue of this, that he is very deceptive and is convincing of things. And if we get convinced, and sometimes we do, where we get convinced of defeat and other things, and, and guess what? That is what the father of lies is there to do, is to defeat you and to steal those things. Last thing he wants is for you to push through that zone to receive. 
Anything he can keep from receiving, he's stealing from you. It's an absolute steal. And so we have to realize this as one of the, the factors that we are overcoming. Disruptor, attempting to steal away that which Yahweh have promised and delivered. Knew that Yeho Yeho sorry, Yehoshua was the son of Yahweh. He knew this. And so when it comes to the temptations, why would, why would the adversary tempt Christ so much? It's kind of interesting. I heard a, a little side note here. I heard a story not that long ago, and that there was a movie that was called The Last Temptation of Christ. And I remember as a kid, because that came out when I was kind of young, and everybody's like going, oh, this is just pure blasphemy. And so I never watched it. I never, oh, whatever, you know, okay. I heard that it's just garbage. Well, I heard it coming from a conservative guy not too long ago, and he goes, a lot of people misunderstood it. And he said, and here's what I gathered out of it. The Last Temptation was the adversary showed Christ's family. He goes, Here's your family, here's your wife, here's your kids, and put them in the scene. And Christ is like living this through a vision that this is my wife, these are my children, that I inherently have an attachment to it as a temptation. Now, the Christ was tempted, that was just a movie, but this was it was a, a, a thing where it was showing the temptations, and I'm like going, wow, that would be a pretty powerful temptation to any person that he knew he would never get, and if he did take that... What would that cost? Everything. Cost everything. Everything. Christ knew that. But it was kind of interesting as I was going through the adversary tempted Christ more than any person has ever been tempted. And you know, I always think about this too, that it says in the in the New Testament that that God cannot be, Yahweh cannot be tempted. Okay? So did did the adversary know that this was the Son of God or think that this was God? He knew exactly who it was. Okay? People here don't, okay? But he did, and we do. We know exactly who this was. But this was kind of an interesting thing. He tempted the he tempted Christ by physical needs. These stones become loaves. Tempting fate to cast thyself down off of the temple, off the, the pinnacle of the temple. Authority, kingdoms of the world and their glory. Now here's the one thing that was kind of neat as I was going through and putting this together. What do these three have in common? They all required Yahoshua to get down on his knees before the adversary, to pick up the bread, to cast himself down. Because if you look up the word cast down to throw yourself down, is to throw yourself down face first upon the earth. Okay? And also to just to bow down and worship. And so the adversary's tempting him from the smallest, and the last one is just blatant to bow down and worship me, and all these will become yours. Okay, and so when I look at these, I'm like going, well, he's hungry. It's been 40 days. Yeah. Okay, so this is an easy one. I'm going to tell you something right now. The adversary has a very tired, old, used bag of tricks. Okay, and there's not a lot of them in there, but they're successful, and he knows how to use them very well. And so it's the same tricks over and over and over again. Let's flip over to James, New Testament. Okay, James 4, 7, who would like to read that on page 236, 237? Yeah. 237, I'll go ahead and read this, 4, 7. Range yourselves, therefore, under Yahweh... But withstand the adversary, and he will flee from you. Okay? Huh. And, and number eight, draw near unto Yahweh, and he will draw near unto you. That is almost exactly what her prophecy yeah. was. Okay? That's almost exactly what it was. And so when we say that, range yourselves, therefore, under Yahweh, but withstand the adversary, and he will flee from you. And that's where we're talking about this. Now, what's going to stop you from receiving is going to be the adversary working within you and you not being able to complete it. Okay, And so this is one of the biggest hurdles. This is that push at the end. Is The adversary wants to steal this away from you so you do not get this. Here's a couple of them that you see on here. A couple words we're looking at. The submit. What does the submit mean and the resist? You know, there's this whole movement out right now that's a resist movement. Okay, 
This should be the resist that we have is resist, okay? Resist, withstand and resist are the words. So as we go through here, this one is the submit, to put under, to arrange under, subordinate, subjection, to subject oneself, obey, okay? A Greek military term meaning to arrange a military fashion, but it means to put yourself under, to submit, to put yourself under. Under who? Yep. Under Yahweh, under Yahweh. So you're going to do one or the other, okay? You're going to submit under Yahweh, or you're going to submit under the world, which is the adversary, okay? You're going to do one or the other. And to withstand, so this is in order. It doesn't say withstand the adversary and submit to Yahweh. Yeah. I think that's important of the way it is put out. Submit to Yahweh, okay, and withstand. Okay, so it's important to have it in that order. Here is the withstand right here. Is the resist withstand to set oneself against. To, st oh. <laughs> to stand against, to withstand, and oppose. Stand against and to do so with success. This is the big thing. Okay, that is what the verse says, and he will flee from you. If you resist and stand against this, the attacks still come. The things will still come against you if you resist. What's going to happen? He's going to run. It's going to go. That's right. And so you're sitting there waiting for your healing, and your condition is getting worse. And you're just like, no, I will absolutely, I will submit to Yahweh, and I will stand against. I will withstand the adversary. So when the adversaries, yeah, where's your healing? Should have come by now. You know, look at all those things you've read about great, great success stories of healings. Where's yours? Where's yours? Where is it? Okay, and you're like, going, oh, you silence that. No, I will stand against you. I will absolutely stand against you. Okay, so Ephesians 4. Let's flip over to there. And that is going to be on page 199. Who would like to read that that hasn't read yet? Page 199, New Testament. 25 through 29. Who would like to read? I would. Okay, go ahead. What chapter, chapter 4? Chapter 4, 25 to 29, page 199. Okay. Therefore, stewing off what is false, <coughs> be speaking truth, each one with his neighbor, because we are the members of one another. Be ye angry and not committing sin. Let not the sun be going down upon your angry mood, neither be giving place unto the adversary. Let the steal and no more steal, but rather let him be tolerant, working with his hands of one thing that is good, that he, that he may well Help. with be yep. giving away to him that had need. Let no putrid discourse out of your mouth be going forth, but anything that is good suited to need for upbuilding, that they, that ye may give benefit unto them that here. That's it. And so this is where we're talking about us. No place for the adversary. No place meaning that we don't we don't dabble in anything where the adversary resides into. And so we don't. We stand against and we bear up one another to help each other to fight that fight as well. Be giving no place unto the adversary. Meaning opportunity, power, occasion for acting. And so we don't do this. So if a person's like, well, I'm going to go do this. You know, it's not a big deal. Well, that can make place for the adversary. <laughs> and it's locked up again. Oh, there we go. Okay, standing against the adversary. We ask and stand in faith. Then what? Okay, let's take a look at this here real quick. Let's go over to Daniel. We're going to look at a couple verses of Daniel because this is kind of an interesting thing. And so Daniel, a couple of occasions, had... He had what would be a very timely answering, and then he had one that was not very timely. And so what's the difference? What was happening? What was going on? So let's go to 923. Uh, who hasn't read yet? What page? Uh, page 857. Actually, 856 it looks like. Here, I'll read this here once everybody gets it. Chapter 9, verses 20 through 23. Everybody there? And while yet I was speaking and praying and confessing my own sin and the sin of my people Israel and causing my supplication to fall down before Yahweh, my Elohim, concerning the holy mountain of my Elohim, while yet I was speaking in prayer, then a man Gabriel, whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning, wearied with rapid flight, touched me 
about the time of the evening present. Yea, and he came and spake with me and said, O Daniel, now have I come forth to teach the understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications came forth a word. I therefore am arrived to tell, because a man delighted in thou art. Mark then the word and then understanding in the revelation. Now, wouldn't that be nice as you are in the middle of your prayer and supplication? Mm -hmm. Done. Yeah. You're like going, okay, right. I like this. This is very timely. This is great. Okay. Now, this is Daniel, okay, who was a, a very mighty man. Let's flip the page over here. Okay, 10. Actually, don't have to flip the page. I think it's on the same page. 10, 2 through 5. Who would like to read that? Okay, go ahead, honey. Okay. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three sevens of days. Food to, let, to delight in did I not eat, neither flesh nor wine came into my mouth, nor did I so much as annoyed myself until were fulfilled three sevens of days. On the twenty-fourth day of the first month, when I was by the side of the great river, the same as Tigris, then lifted I up mine eyes, and who was in lo, a man clothed in lion, whose loins were gritted with the bright gold of Upas. That's it. And so what happens? 24 days, 24 days came by. And so you think about that, a man of, of Yahweh and something major going on, and he's basically limiting his diet to fast to get the answer that he needs to get, and he's not getting it. And three weeks to buy, the better part of a month. Mm -hmm. Who wants to read 11 through 14? Okay, go ahead. 11 through 14. Mm -hmm. It's kind of on the then side. Then said... He unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly delighted in have understanding the words which I am about to speak to thee. I stand up with uh, thou, for now I have been sent unto thee. And when he had then spoken with me this word, I stood up trembling. Well, hold on a second here. So we jumped over a lot of this stuff here. 24 days later, a messenger comes to Daniel. Okay, and so I skipped over all that. This is the, the, the part of the messenger coming to him. Now the messenger is here on scene. Okay, go ahead. Now we're in uh, the, the bottom part there of the verse. Then said... Wait. That's it, you're right. Then said he unto me, Do not fear Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to humble thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I come by the reason of thy words. But the ruler of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days below. Michael, one of the chief rulers, came in to help me, and I left him there beside the king of Persia. So then I come and let thee understand which shall befall thy people in the, oh, in the after part of thy days, for, ye, for yet is the vision of those days. That's it. And so... Guess what this is? This is a messenger, which is what? Not a flesh, spiritual, and is having a spiritual battle. The king of Persia is some kind of a demonic or unclean spirit that entangled the messenger from coming back. Okay, And so when we, when we read the words, what does it say? That we, we, we not flesh and blood. Okay? Not flesh and blood, but spiritual battles in high places. And so remember that in, uh, what was it, Elisha, who saw that. And he, that one guy's like, oh, how are we going to do this? And he said, he asked, he asked Yahweh, show him, show him. And so the guy had his eyes open, and he saw the mountains were covered with chariots. All spiritual. It's a spiritual that was not seen. And so when we're looking at things and we're worried, waiting for things, there's a spiritual battle going on that we are not seeing, and we have to realize it's taking place. And this is Daniel. Okay, this is Daniel of all people who have the same thing. And so are we any different that there's not going to be a spiritual battle that we're waiting for something to happen and what's taking place? And so to be hanging tight, to be hanging in there, and not let the faith be broken down, and not let those things go, but to keep fighting, and here's Daniel that had one immediately, and then one where there was a spiritual warfare going on between. Taking authority, <coughs> hope and wish, does not activate healing. Okay, You can hope and wish all you want. You know, I always think about that where our thoughts and prayers are with you. Well, that's great, and it's not a bad thing. Okay, but it's you know it's like a hail mary pass. It's not even going to go to anybody. Yeah. Okay, it, Yahweh hears those. But when we talk about this hope and wish, 
is what keeps you from getting through that to receive. That's where we're trying to break through. So it's not the hope and wish. Praying primes the pump. Okay? And the praying and the word of Yahweh is what builds us to get that faith to push through. Okay? So it's priming the pump, the hope and the wish that might inspire you to get to the praying, to work to the point where you're believing and you faith activate. You activate in faith. And so the faith is what's going to push it through. It's only through the faith that's going to do that, and we have to hang tight. So here's one of them that I like from Andrew Womack that he said. Prayers like water or fertilizer that you put on a seed. But without planting a seed, watering is useless. Okay? And the seed that, you know, what are we? Now, you think about this. We are the brothers of Christ. Okay? Fellow heirs that have inherited Okay? Not by own, our own work. Would a brother not stand in the battle for his brother, for his sister? That's us. And so when we look at this, we have to view things a little different to push ourselves beyond what we're, our mind's telling us and what the world starts again, what other believers are telling us. That, well, you know, this just kind of happens. At this point, this happens, and then this breaks down, and then this takes place, and then, you know, it's all over. Don't worry about it. Everybody goes through that. And God doesn't heal everybody. He does not heal everybody. So Deuteronomy, two more left here, and we'll close her out here. I think we're going to be on time. Deuteronomy 28. Page 226. Excellent. Good job, baby. 28, 13 through 15. Who would like to read? read. Okay, thank you. And Yahweh will give thee to be the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be only above, and shalt not be beneath, because thou didst hearken unto the commandments of Yahweh thy Elohim, which I am commanding thee today to observe and to do. And dost not turn aside from any of the words which I am commanding you today, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other Elohim to serve them. But it shall be, if thou do not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim, to observe to, all, to do all of his commandments and his stat, statues, which I am commanding thee today, then shall thou, then shall come in upon thee all these curses, and shall reach thee. Absolutely, and so this is what we're saying. What's he telling you? If you do the commandments, that these things won't come against you. And so when people are looking at that, like going, okay, so he, this is his promise that he was telling them back in that day. Let's look at New Testament. Have to go back here. Sorry, I don't know why it's acting up so bad. <laughs> okay, we have one more here to go to. Let's go to Galatians 3. Okay, page 193. 192, actually. 13 through 14 of chapter 3. Okay. Okay, so read about the curse. That was what we read in Deuteronomy, that if you obeyed Yahweh and you kept his commandments and you didn't turn from the left or to the right, that you would avert the curses that would come upon you. Okay, And so sometimes those happen where somebody did. Somebody may have even been in a life of sin and some of these curses come upon them and then they bow down and come before Yahweh and is there freedom to be there? There may still be consequences, but yeah, they can happen. It can, a person can receive that. So, 3, 13 through 14, who would like to read? Would, uh, okay, go ahead. Christ has been redeemed us out of the care of the law. Curse of the law. Having become in other half a curse, because it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree, in order that unto the nations the blessing of Abraham might come about in Jesus Christ, in order that the promise of the Spirit we might receive through the means of the faith. That's it. That's the means of the faith. And so the whole thing is is to what is it going to take to get us to be pushed through? And sometimes it's one of those battles where we do it and we don't succeed. I've been there most times when it comes to those where I'm speaking for faith. Okay, And so it's to push to what's going to work, what, did, what does it take, and to follow those stories and those people that we see. And Womack's great with that because of how he did that. And one of the big things he says is to visualize it. 
you have to visualize it. And so what does the scripture say? That when you're praying for something, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. That you've already received it. As you're praying for it, that you have already received it as you're praying for it. Now that's visualizing it. You are visualizing. So as you're praying, you're visualizing this is done and this is what I'm going to have. This is it. This is what I see. And so that's the, that's the activation of the faith. All right. We'll go ahead and close here. And I will finish here with the word and a uh, word for anybody who may be watching later. So Yahweh, we thank you for everything you've given us. We thank you for uh, the measure of faith that you put upon us that... that uh, that we have the spirit that, that, that raised your son from the dead within us, so that we are more than able and that we are conquerors and all these things, all the promises that you've given us, that we constantly remind, that we refresh, that we knock off the rust, that the world is as like a, a, a piece of iron in salt water. Uh, when you pull it out, it's just it's covered with rust. And that is the world, and that we are to sharpen each other, this iron, and sharpen each other with your words, the words that you've spoken, the words that are written, that we are able to knock these things off and, and cleanse ourselves from this world, that we are not corrupted by this world, and that we take favor of the promises that you have given to us and, and those promises that were made at a great price. And so we thank you for this. We thank you, Christ, for being our head again, that we are able to speak your name and be able able to uh, manifest and and have the authority that is within you that the 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 the, the wicked the unclean spirits they knew when that word came out that your name that those would that were had the authority they knew those who had the authority that they would act, that they had to obey because of the authority of that and so we have that in us we thank you Christ for that and we thank you Yahweh for your son that that came to give that to us and pay that price we thank you for the words you give and for all these believers here and all those who would be watching at a later time and we just thank you for this and uh, my sons and daughters know that I am within you and that I hear your supplications uh, speak to me and sing the praises that I give to you for I am calling you to glorify and to stand beyond do not let the things uh, uh, weigh you down but but come come out and 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 sing praises play the music and turn your heart towards me as you turn your heart towards me and that you are singing in grace and gratitude that you will see the thing that the floodgates open up I see it as as the what's available to us is like the story of the woman with the oil and the, and the vases and when did it stop it only stopped when there was no vases there was no end had there been more vases there was no shortage of oil and I see this as well that the 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 pouring out is is the same way that as long as someone is standing there attentive and ready to collect that it will not stop that that will continue pouring all right amen we will see you all next week bye bye gang